بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. So one of the question that I often get asked a lot, اللهم استعان, is the question about uh, the memorization of hadith and what a person should start with, and uh, not just start with, but you know how the person uh, progresses through the different books. Now, of course, this is uh, I'm only going to give you my opinion. You know, not just my opinion, but the opinion of the people that I've taken their opinions from, obviously, you know, because this has always been a question that's not, it's not new to anybody. It's a question that we also asked ourselves when we were seeking knowledge, which, which, which are the best books to start getting, to start memorizing. And of course, every science has its own books, its own, you know, the, the material that the people memorize, you know, to progress in that science. And hadith, obviously, because it's a, it's a, we're not. I'm not talking about like mustala hadith or al hadith, but an actual hadith, the actual metan, the body of the hadith. Uh, obviously, it's a you know it's memorization. So the person he wants to memorize what is uh, you know the books that are easier starting off with, obviously to start to expand his memory, and also the books that you know cover the most the most material in a small in a small obviously in a small book, and then start to expand and expand and expand all right so uh as far as like where the person should start it i mean that this is i don't think anybody would disagree that the number one book that the person should start with is an arabayna nawawiya all right so this this would be the starting point for everybody and if the person can find one of the matun that also has the extra seven hadiths from ibn rajab because ibn rajab he added uh, seven more hadiths to make it 50 50 hadiths and this is a what he explained in Jami' Ulum al Hikam. He explained the 50 hadith. So he, so he explained the, the, the hadith from Al Imam al Nawawi, and then he explained the extra hadith that he put in his, his book. But if all, the only thing that the person could get is the, the 40 hadith from Imam al Nawawi and get it and start, and that's, that's, that's the starting point of memorization. The starting point of memorization is that book. Memorize it, memorize it, memorize it. Memorize everything in the book. Uh, if you if you read the first hadith, where the first hadith of uh, of course is an Umar, so he gives you know if you notice Imam No because obviously it's, a lot of these hadith are taken out of, are taken from Riyal al Salihin right, so if you look to, to what he did with some of that hadith is that he would give the whole name of the Sahabi, and even some of the times he would give the whole name of the of the narrator the 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 Bukharaj, which is like Bukhari Muslim, so if you look at the first hadith which is Umar bin Khattab. He didn't just say, you know, an Umar, you know, he said, an Abi Hafs, an Amir al-Mu'mineen Abi Hafs and Umar bin al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu. And then he gave the hadith, qala, sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yukul, inna ma la'amalu bin niyati, wa inna ma la'kulu imran ma nawa, fa man kanat hijratu ila Allahi wa rasoolihi, fa hijratu ila Allahi wa rasoolihi, wa man kanat hijratu li dunya yusibuha, au imra'atin yankihuha, fa hijratu ila ma hajra ilayh. And then when he gave the takhrij of the hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, he didn't just say, okay, wa akhrajuhu Bukhari wa Muslim, or call him mutafaqun ali, but he actually gave the whole name, you know, you know, uh, he mentioned, you know, the name, the whole name of uh, Imam al-Bukhari, you know, Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim ibn Mughira ibn Baradizba al-Bukhari, al-Ju'fi al-Bukhari, and you know, al-Ju'fi obviously is because uh, this was the name of the, the tribe, of the, the family that the person is, 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 one of his relatives, his great great grand, uh, was it great, uh, is Mughira. Mughira, when he became Muslim, because Baradizba was a Majusi. And uh, Mughira, when he became Muslim, he became Muslim with a person from the family, uh, from this Qabila, Jurfi. So, and in those days, the person, whenever they became a Muslim, uh, you know, from a person, they would take on the name, the, the Qabila, the family name of that person. So that's why Al Bukhari is Al Jurfi. But he's not actually a Jurafi, but this is what uh, Al Mughira. Mughira, he took on this name because that's the, the person that brought him, you know, that gave him da'wah to where he became Muslim was from this from this tribe, Al Jurafi. So, and then obviously with the Muslim, he also brought the whole name of Muslim and so on and so forth. So, all of this stuff, you want to memorize everything. You know, you want to memorize whatever, whatever Imam Noah we brought in the book, memorize the whole book. Don't just like. Even the hadith that are that are known to be da'if, memorize them. And uh, this is this is your starting point. This is your starting point. Now, once you've uh, memorized the Arba'in Nawawiyah, obviously you want to study it. 
So you want to find a person who's able to teach this book. And uh, because this book is, is one of the most beautiful books because what Imam Noah was able to do in these 40 hadiths was amazing. And it's amazing because you, if, you, if you think about it, sit in any khutbah where the person is actually quoting hadiths and not reading from a newspaper. But uh, sit in any khutbah uh, of the people of hadith. Sit in any class of a person that is knowledgeable of hadith and tell me how many times the khatib or the mudarris, you know, the ustad, how many times they use one of these arba'in, you know, these hadith from arba'in and nawawiyah. And you'd be surprised. You sit in a class in Bukhari, sit in a class in Tafsir bin Kathir, you listen to a khutbah, you listen to a muhadara, which is like a, you know, like a lecture type thing. You know, go to a conference and you listen to people speak and you hear these ahadith being repeated and repeated and repeated because these ahadith, you see that the basis of every principle in Islam, it goes back to these ahadith. And it's the, the way that he was, that Allah gave him the tawfiq to compile these ahadith together is amazing. And on top of that, you have the explanation of Ibn Rajab, which is Jami' Ulum wal Hikam, which is double amazing. What he did in the explanation of Al Arba'in is unbelievable. You know, so just to sit back and read that book is just Allah Musta'an. Like you, there's no way that you can really truly understand what Imam Nawi was given the tawfiq to do. And then on top of that, what Imam Rajab was given the tawfiq to do with, with his explanation of Al Arba'in. There's no way that you can read that book and have any doubt in Islam after that to know that this is a religion, that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has protected this religion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought up these, these people and given them this knowledge to protect this religion. This is, this is a, it's amazing. And the explanation of Ibn Rajab is amazing. It's an amazing explanation. And, and once a person is memorized in Arba'in and the person has the ability to read Arab, the Arabic language, then you definitely have to sit down and read Ibn Rajab's explanation. If you don't, I mean, I wouldn't advise, like if you're a beginning student, it probably was not too advisable to read that in the, in the beginning because it is a very in-depth explanation. So any of the ahadith that are dealing with certain masa'al al uh, Ibn Rajab is going to go deep, deep into that masa'ala. And he's going to, you know, he's really going to give you the whole picture of the masa'ala. Uh, so for that reason, you know, it might be better for the person to start off maybe with an explanation of Sheikh Uthameen, uh, Sheikh Salah Ali Sheikh. I know that he has an explanation of Al Arba'in that was in book form. Uh, but you know, the thing about it is, is that these books they're from the ulama of our time, they were not written as a book. You understand? These were classes that were given, and it's a lot different when you read a book that was written, written, than you read than to read a book that was an actual class. And the people sat down with the audios and wrote the audios out and to the point that it became a book, you know. So the only one that I know that, you know, that they did that with, and it's very easy to read, uh, Sheikh Uthaymeen. Like if you read the books of Sheikh Uthaymeen, you would never guess that this was a class, that this was a recording, because it reads just like a book. Because obviously a person who's writing a book, he's writing for a reader. When a person who's speaking and giving a lecture, he's speaking for a listener. He's not speaking for a reader. So the language that he's using is different than the language that the person is going to use when he's putting things into, into writing. And obviously with writing, you have to have more clarification than you do with speaking. Because with speaking, there's so many elements that go into speaking. You know, the body language, the facial expressions. And, and, you know, even you being able to look at the people and see their face and see their reaction to understand whether or not they understood or not. But with the reader, you don't have that available to you. So you have to make everything as clear as possible because you're going to put it out in a book and leave. And in the case of somebody like Ibn Rajab, he put it into a book and he left a long time ago, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So he's not around. He's in his grave now. So he can't, you know, you can't go and say, okay, did I make it clear for the people? You have to keep that in mind as you're writing the book. So that's why I say like those types of books are better. It's better to get a book that was written because it's explained better and it's more detailed than to go and go through something that was actually listen. I mean, take the durus of Sheikh Uthaymeen and listen to them. You know, and any of the ulama from our time, you know, take the audios and listen to them and take notes and memorize from the notes and everything. Alhamdulillah, it's beneficial. 
And if the only thing that you can find is the book, then, then get the book. But, uh, you know, if you have the ability to read through Ibn Rajab's book, then that's the best thing. The next thing is what to do next. Now, a lot of the people, they probably uh, advise going from Al Arba'in to Umdat al Ahkam, which is not a bad suggestion, honestly. It's not a bad suggestion whatsoever because Umdat al Ahkam is 420 something hadiths, uh, depending on the, the print that you get. It's a lot, you know, you, it covers the majority of the stuff that you need to know in fiqh somewhat. Uh, because the thing is that the conditions that Abdul Ghani and Imam Abdul Ghani had in the Umdat al was that all the ahadith had to be muntafaqun ali. So because of that that condition, there's going to be a lot of ahadith that aren't going to be in the book. So uh, for that reason, I mean, alhamdulillah, you, you're going to get a good portion of what you need to understand as far as the you know ahkam, especially for the beginner. And because the book is smaller... It's a, a lot smaller than Bulugh Maram, obviously, because Bulugh Maram is over 1,400 hadith, and this is a uh, 400 something. So there's like a thousand hadith difference between the two books. Uh, so it's a lot easier to memorize. So uh, that's a definite, that's a definite uh, good progression after Arba'in to go and take uh, Umdat al Ahkam. And once the person memorizes Umdat al Ahkam, or as he's memorizing Umdat al Ahkam, you also have a lot of good explanations. Person should find a person who's well well versed. And fiqh, but not fiqh as far as any of the madahib. You should look for a person from Ahl al-Hadith, the person who understands the fiqh from the hadith. You know, because you don't want to be taking hadith and somebody t starts giving you this madhab says this, and I don't care. Right now, I just want to understand the hadith and what the masala is that I can take from the hadith. I don't care what the madhab says. If the madhab is not about this hadith, it's not my concern right now. My concern in the beginning it's to only understand this hadith and what this hadith is saying. This you get later because you don't want to get caught up in going into like a lot of the difference of opinion between the madahib and certain masail. And then obviously as you get into bigger books, you're going to start to see different ahadith where it's like, okay, this hadith says this and this is am and this hadith over here says this and this is khas. You, you get into this later, but right now you want to keep it as simple as possible. So memorize Ramadan to Lahkam and... Uh, and alhamdulillah, study it. Uh, as far as the explanations of Umdat al Ahkam, you have uh, one of the easiest explanations is Taysir al Alam, is by uh, Sheikh Abdullah Ali Basam, Rahimahullah. It's a very simple, simple, simple uh, book. You can find it in one volume, you can find it in two volumes. Uh, alhamdulillah, I think you pretty much any bookstore online, if you're in the West, you can order from if you're if you're in like a Muslim country, Egypt, Saudi, Yemen, or any place. You can find this book in any bookstore. Any bookstore you can find it. Uh, it's, it's very simple. He breaks down the words that are not common in the Arabic language. He breaks down the issue that you should understand from the Hadith, and he breaks down the the general meaning and uh, certain aspects. Like if there's a need for like fatawa from Ahl al -Am, like Sheikh Udaymi, Sheikh Mabaz, and whatnot. He'll he'll bring those fatawa. So Alhamdulillah, it's a very, very beneficial book. Taysir uh, Alam. There's a other, the other explanations uh, that are probably more available, but a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult than Taysir is Ihkam uh, al-Ahkam. Ihkam al-Ahkam is by Ibn Daqiq al-Eid. And this, this is a little bit deeper. And uh, maybe the person might have to have some background in the Sul al-Fiqh and, back, and a background in Qawa'al al-Fiqhiyya. To kind of read through the sharh, but I mean, if the read through it, read through it and try to get what you can get from it, and uh, anything that you have difficulty with, save it for later, inshallah. Because as as you learn more and you get you know more familiar with a lot of the asul, inshallah, uh, the the issues that he brings up in that book will become uh, easier. And these are the two basic uh, shuru. I mean, you also have like uh, I think now they printed different shuru. I think if I'm not mistaken, from Sheikh Saleh Fozan. Shaykh uh, Udaymin, uh, Rahimahullah. And uh, so, alhamdulillah, whatever you can benefit from, benefit from. But the, the, the best one, Taysir Alam. For the beginner, it's the easiest and it's, it's written. Like I said, again, we're going back to the, we're going to go back to the rule that to read a book that was written for the reader is better than to read a book that was actually spoken for a listener. So, Allah Musta'an. So, after that, now what to do after this? Now, a lot of the people back in the days, because we didn't have a lot of the resources available to us that we have now, so 
normally the person will go from Umdat al Ahkam to Riyadh al Salihin. Uh, even some people might even tell you to skip the Umdat al Ahkam part, and I'll get to that in a minute. You know, so inshallah, that's a decision that you can make for yourself. Uh, Riyadh al Salihin is a big jump. It's a big jump because Riyadh al Salihin is not a small book. Now, obviously, when we're dealing with the with brothers in the West and uh, students, not just the brothers, but brothers and sisters in the West who are trying to memorize these books, the, the language is not Arabic. And also, we came up in a society where we didn't grow up around, you know, hearing hadith, hearing Quran, and here. So you see that our memory, our memory, our, our ability to memorize is a lot different than the the Arabs, because even if he didn't grow up in a society where, like, he wasn't memorizing Quran as a kid, but he heard it a lot. So now when that same kid who heard the Qur'an over and over and over, his mother was playing Qur'an when he's cleaning, when she's cleaning, uh, he heard it in the streets, in the taxis, because most of the taxis I know in Yemen, the, all the taxis, they, they play Qur'an in the morning. All the taxis, they play Qur'an in the morning, they start playing music at night, uh, you know, when the shayateen come out. But in the morning, they would always play Qur'an. So if you always got a taxi or got on the bus in, in the morning, you generally you hear Qur'an. You walk past bookshops and you hear the Qur'an. So you hear it all over the place. Whereas but us, we come up in a society where we never heard the Quran. And then you add to that to the fact that you you know that you were born into a family that's not Muslim. So you never heard Quran. You never heard Hadith. All you heard your whole life was just music. So now you become Muslim. And now you want to start memorizing the Quran. You find it's not easy. You start to memorize Hadith. You find it's not easy. It's not. So we have to take an approach that is a lot different than the approach that the people overseas they grew up in Muslim families or grew up in Muslim countries, they would take because we we have a different upbringing. So to tell somebody to go from like, uh, either go from like Arba'in, to go from Umd al to Riyadh al-Salihin, that's a, that's a huge jump. It's a huge jump because you're going from a book that has 400 hadiths to a book that has almost 2,000. You know, so that's, that's a big difference. It's a big difference. Or, if the, you know, if the person decided to skip Umd uh, al-Tulah and just go from Arba'in to Riyadh al-Salihin. Again, you're going from 43 hadiths or 50 if you're doing Ibn Rajabs and, and you're going to 1,800 hadiths. That, that's, that's too much. So now that we have different resources available to us now, I would say that the best thing to do is get a mukhtasar of Riyadh al-Salihin. Uh, there's different ones available. Uh, the, the, the one that I found was the best for me, my personal favorite was the one that was printed by Dara ibn Jozi. I cannot recall the name of the person. I don't know if uh, I have it available because I always keep it next to me. It looks like that. So you can see the name of the person. This is the Muqtasar al-Riyadh al-Salihin. Where in this case, he kept the majority of the... I mean, he kept the most... I mean, obviously, every hadith is important, right? But you have certain hadith that you, uh, that you hear a lot... And there's some hadith, you hear them from time to time. So what he managed to, to, to do is to keep the vast majority of hadith that you hear a lot. And uh, alhamdulillah. So it's, it's 800, 811 hadith. 811. So this book, you see the size of it. It's not that, I mean, it's not small, but it's not big. And it's definitely not the size of Riyadh al-Salihin. Because uh, Riyadh al-Salihin, I don't think... Uh, Yes, we do. That's Riyal the Salahim. You see the difference? That's a huge difference. So if you take that into account, and you're talking about go and memorize this, and we look at like this book right here, and how many hadiths are in, uh, hadiths are in, uh, that's a hard word to say, right? Hadiths. That would have seen. <laughs> how many hadith are in this book? You have 1,896. 1,896 hadith. A hadith, you know, a hadith, you know, so look at the difference. So this is what I would advise the people to do. If you can get this book, it's by Dara ibn Josie. Uh, I don't know if they deliver it to the West or not, but if you know somebody in Saudi Arabia that can buy it for you, they have it available. It's very cheap. I think I bought this, this right here, I bought it for 10 riyals. 10 riyals, it's, it's more expensive. And 10 riyals is not even $3, it's less than $3. It's two, maybe what, two and a half dollars, maybe, or maybe even less. So they were selling this at that time when it first came out. They were selling it for 10 riyals. It might be a little bit more expensive now. You can check. But uh, they just had a sale on it. And it was they just let it go. So I bought like a, 
six or seven copies of it, you know, for me, for my kids, for everybody. Because even my kids, they love this book. They love to, like, read through it and, and, and hear the hadith in it. So it's a very beneficial book. And it, it's a lot easier because 800, 800 plus hadiths is a lot easier to memorize than 1,896 hadiths. So that being said, this is what I would advise a person to do. I would, I'd advise you to memorize this first. Uh, as far as the Riyadh al-Salihin, you can come back to it if there's a need. But I, you know, I don't, you know, what I, what I, what I've done is that whenever I needed a hadith from Riyadh al-Salihin that wasn't here, because there are going to be a hadith that are not here. They're just not here. Uh, for whatever reason, he just didn't put that hadith there. He's a human being and he made a mistake. You know, what I would do is I would take the hadith from Riyadh al-Salihin that are not here that I needed. I put them in a notebook and I memorize them from the notebook. And in that way, it just, it's a lot easier. Uh, after this book, now, once you get done with this, uh, you want to go to something a little bit bigger, which is going to be uh, Balugh Maram. Uh, Balugh Maram, obviously, now, and this is why I said, this is where now you got the difference of opinion. Now, do you want to sit there and put a lot of effort into memorizing Umda al Ahkam, and then you're going to have to come back and memorize Balugh Maram, and some of the narrations that are in Balugh Maram are not the same as the, the, the ones in Umda al Ahkam. So you end up memorizing double what you would, what you actually memorize. Uh, Balugh Maram is a lot more difficult because of the takhrij of the hadith. One thing that will help you out, again, if you're able to get this book, but this this one's a little bit. This one's from Maktab al Rushd. Now I don't like again. I don't know if they do this on if they sell online or not. If they ship overseas. I don't know. But if you know somebody that can go to Maktab al Rushd in uh, Riyadh, and then they can get this book for you and send it to you. But this is a tahdib. The Tahdib of Balugh Maram. Basically, what they did is they went through the book. They didn't take they didn't take any ahadith out. It's all the same ahadith, and Balugh Maram is the same ahadith. But what they did is they just took out a lot of the the extra takhrij. So, like for example, like uh, the first hadith, you know, uh, uh, let me um, let me get the kitab tahara because the first hadith is Abi Huraira, you know. And what the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the, uh, the the ocean, the water in the ocean, you know, and the, and the fish in the ocean. Well, actually, he wasn't. He was asked about the water and making wudu. So he said, "An Abi Huraira told me, 'No, Kala Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam al Bahr, huwa tahuru ma'ahu al hillu ma'itatuhu." So up to here, you're going to see the same thing in Balugh Maram, but here he just says, "Akhrajuhu al Arba." That's it. He doesn't go through all the other stuff that is added, uh, you know. أَخْرَجُوا إِبْنَ أَخْرَجُوا أَرْبَعَ إِلَى إِبْنَ مَاجِدٍ إِلَى إِلَى فُنَانٍ فُنَانٍ You know, he just says أَخْرَجُوا الْأَرْبَعَ That's it. It goes on about. He doesn't, you know, so he lessens a lot of the the the, the speech around تخريج the تخريج of the hadith that happened in Mahajir. And anybody that's familiar with Balugh Maram, they know they know what I'm talking about. So all you got to do is just pick up Balugh Maram and you see, like some sometimes. That the takhrij of the hadith is longer than the hadith itself, al mustahan So, so what they did is they just made this tahdib, and that way you can just memorize it like that, and then you can go back and check Balugh Maram, and you can check, you know, what half of them had said about the different hadith. Because here he kept like ninety, like ninety-eight percent of the book is still there. There's no hadith that's not there. Every hadith is still there. It's just uh, he just shortened the takhrij. So he would just say akhraju arba, akhraju khamsa, you know, mutafakun ali. And, you know, he wouldn't say anything else. He wouldn't mention, you know, Ila Hada, you know, or, you know, Waqala ibn Majib, Kedha Wakedha from Hadith, or Qala ibn Abi Shayba, Kedha Wakedha Wakedha. He'd just say, you know, that's it. Akhraju ibn Majib. So, and then he'd go on about his business. Now, obviously, if it was something that half of the Mahajir mentioned that was Da'if, he'd mention that. It's, it's in the book. It's just about the Takhrij. He just shortened it. So, this is the next book. Uh, Balugh Maram is the next book that you should memorize, you should study. Uh, as far as the explanations of uh, Balugh Maram, they're much more vast than Umdat al uh, And this is what I advise the people to do. Honestly, I don't, I wouldn't advise the people to memorize Umdat al I advise you to read the explanations, and if you have the ability to study it, study it. But you really want to conserve your energy to just go ahead and start memorizing uh, Balugh Maram. I mean, obviously, you want to go through this book first, because we, like I said, this is 811 hadiths, so it's a lot easier. You can do this, inshallah, you know. But uh, and, and while you're doing that, you're conserving your energy. Take Balugh Maram, read it. You know, if you could read Balugh Maram once a month, read it once a month, uh, twice a month. However you can do it, you know. But I, I wouldn't advise you to read it less than once a month. Just to become familiar with it, 
So once you're done with the memorization of this book, you'll be very, very familiar with Balugh Maram, and you can memorize it a lot faster. Because Balugh Maram, obviously, is because it's a hadith al ahkam, it's a lot more important. Because these are like things that you need to like act. You know, you need to act on it. You know, so you got the ahkam al salat, the ahkam al tahara, the ahkam al zakat. So all of these are like things that you're going to act on as a Muslim. You need to know as a Muslim to act, to, to, to act correctly as a Muslim, to do the things that are correct. So Balugh Maram is very important. So even while you're memorizing this book, you should still be reading this book, or at least reading another book of hadith, you know, constantly, constantly reading book, a book that has ahkam in it, you know, until, until you're going to memorize uh, that book. So with uh, Balugh Maram, you get a good teacher. You have different shuruh. Uh, the same person, Sheikh Abdullah Ali Bassam, he wrote a book, it's called Tawdih Al-Ahkam. It's in, uh, the, the copy that I have is three volumes, but you have different, you got some in two volumes, some in four volumes. It differs, right? So he, that's probably the best explanation of Balugh Maram for the person getting started in Balugh Maram. So Tawdih Al-Ahkam. All right, uh, the Sheikh Abdullah Ali Bassam. So take that book, read it. Take all the benefit, mashallah, he did the same thing with that he did in Umdat al Khan with the Taysir al Alam, but it's just expanded. He did more with the Balugh Maram, obviously. He went into more detail and he gave more of an explanation, more fatawa. So it's a very beneficial book. Uh, after that, you could read like uh, Subul al Salam. Subul al Salam is the uh, Amir al Sanani, Rahimahullah. A uh, very, very, very beneficial book. Yeah, you're going to also find that a lot of the information from Tawdih al Akam was taken out of Subul al Salam. So once you read Subul al Salam, once you read Tawdih al Akam and you got a good understanding of it, you're going to see that it's uh, a lot of that information that you got is going to be repeated in uh, Subul al Salam. Uh, another explanation uh, of Balugh uh, Maram you have a uh, Fath al Alam, which is by one of the former students of Damaj, Muhammad ibn Hizam. It's a decent book. Uh, I would still put uh, Tawdi al Ahkam, but uh, above both of these, both, both of these books as far as the benefit. But uh, Fath al Alam, as far as like going through what he did, is he compiled a lot of different statements from uh, different books, like you know. Uh, he mentions like you know what what did you know uh, Ibn Qudama saying Al Mughni what is Sheikh Hudaymin he mentions Sheikh Hudaymin in his explanation of Zad Al Mustaqna he will mention Shokani what he said in Nail Al Tar he mentioned Amir Al Sanani what he said in Subul Al Salam and he mentioned half of the Al Hajar and what he said in Fath Al Bari anything that pertains to the Hadith so it's good to have all that information in one place you know so as far as that's concerned but as far as the explanation of the Masala itself and going to, to the hadith and breaking the hadith down, what the words mean and the meanings, then Tawdih al Ahkam is definitely the best book for that. Subul al Salam is the second best. Fath al Alam is kind of like a, a companion to these two books, you understand? Because number one, you also get like, a, because Muhammad ibn Hizam, he did study in Damaj, uh, so he the, the knowledge that he, that he has of going and researching the hadith and doing a tahqiq of the hadith, alhamdulillah, because also with Fath al Alam, he did a tahqiq of Balugh Maram also. Which is, uh, you can find it online, you know, but uh, from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe from his website. Uh, so, Alhamdulillah, so that way you get the actual research of the hadith itself and the siha, the hadith is sahih or the hadith is not sahih and why is it not sahih. So that's a good book, uh, like, uh, like I said, it's like kind of a companion to those two other books. But the main book that you want to focus on, Tawdih al-Ahkam, and after that, obviously, will be Subul al-Salam. After Balugh al-Maram, you know, you're going to find like a lot of the people, uh, generally what most of the people, the majority of the people will tell you to do. And uh, the best advice is to, after that, memorize uh, Al-Lu'lu wal marajan which are all the ahadith that are mutafakun ali, compiled into one book. So this is uh, this is like the uh, the father of Umdut al I guess you could say, because Umdut al is only dealing with the ahadith al whereas Lu'lu wal marajan and Lu'lu wa Marajan is dealing with all the hadith that are mutafakun Ali compiled into one book. So this obviously, this is a lot better. Because uh, this, mashallah, you get like, uh, you know, all the different abwab. So not just not just the abwab al-faqiyah, but you also get, uh, you know, the bab al-adab. You know, you get uh, ashrat al-sa'a, uh, you get tafsir, you get uh, tawheed. You get like all the other stuff that also, the, you know, because obviously with like a Sahih Muslim, you got like Kitab al-Iman. 
with uh, Bukhari, you have Kitab al-Imam, but you also have a uh, Kitab al-Tawheed at the end of the book. You have Kitab al am You have uh, a lot of different abwab in the book. So after Balogh Maram, the majority of the students, you know, uh, like, and I say the majority of the students because that was not the level that I reached. So I'll let you know that now, but I'm telling you based on what I saw, the majority of the students that were successful in memorizing hadith, they all went straight to al uh, Marjan after that. Then after that, what they would do is from uh, al Marjan, they would just start memorizing one of the Sahihain. Now, there's a difference of opinion about which one is better. So a lot of, uh, a lot of the people, they might start memorizing Sahih Muslim first. And when I mean Sahih Muslim, I mean Sahih Muslim. I'm not talking about the Muqtasar of Sahih Muslim. I'm talking about actually memorizing Sahih Muslim with the Asanid. So they would memorize Sahih Muslim first because it's easier. It's a lot easier. And the way that he did, the way that he does it is that he puts all the hadith that are together, like in one subject in one area. You know, whereas Bukhari, he'll break the hadith up and put it in a different area. So it makes it a, a little bit difficult because you you might be memorizing the same hadith different times, but with different different wordings a lot of the times. Because he'll repeat the same hadith with a different sanad and, it, and the wording might be just very, very slight. So it's a, it's a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult. So that's the reason why a lot of the people, they start off with Sahih Muslim. But it, it's up to the person. If you want to start with Bukhari, Bukhari is obviously larger, it's bigger. Uh, the hadith are smaller most of the times. The majority of the times, the hadith are smaller in Bukhari than they are in Muslim. Because a Muslim, he'll bring the whole hadith once. That's what his plan was. Sometimes if he had to repeat the hadith, he'll repeat the hadith. But Bukhari, he would he would break the hadith up into its parts and put it in the bab that's basic based on that part of the hadith, you know, so you see like uh, the majority, like the vast majority of the, the hadith in Bukhari are a lot shorter. Uh, so whatever, you know, what what a person could do is if you go online and you find, uh, for example, like somebody who's teaching Bukhari, who's taught Bukhari completely, whether it's uh, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abad, uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Adam al-Ethiopia, I don't, I'm not sure if they have his whole Bukhari uh, recorded or not. But what you can do, it, whether it's Sahih Muslim or Sahih Bukhari, sit down and listen to it. And just the way that we used to do it in the Maj was we used to just memorize it with the class. So the Sheikh would read the Hadith today, whatever Hadith it was. Generally, sometimes he would just read one Hadith. Sometimes if it was uh, two or three Hadiths with a very similar wording, he would read the whole Bab. And then we just have to memorize one of them. Some, some of the students will memorize all three of them, you know, and, uh, and that's it. And we come back the next day and we would read the Hadith. hadith. Uh, before the before the lesson of Bukhari, before the next lesson, and we just kept doing that just like that every single day. So even though uh, in those days we were not memorizing the hadith to keep it, you know, because we're busy doing other things. Like you know, obviously when you start doing Talib al you're busy learning Arabic, you're busy memorizing Quran, you're busy memorizing the, the smaller matun like Surah Thalath al Arba'in, al Baykuniya, Nadm al Warqad, and stuff like that. Quran al Arba, Kitab Tawheed, whatever. You know, you're busy memorizing these small matun. So we would still memorize the hadith with the Shaykh, regardless. And Bukhari, because of the hadith being repeated so many times, that you would you would memorize the, the hadith and then you would memorize the same hadith again, but with a different sanad. But the thing is, is that over time, like year after year after year of doing that, the hadith, the hadith it starts to get stuck in your head. Not just the hadith, but the chain of narration. So it gets to the point where, like, you know, you know, this, like you say, oh, yeah, I know this chain. All right, you know, if you can look at the chain of narration, you already, you got it. You got it. Like, when within seconds, you already got the chain of narration memorized. Now you just got to memorize the body of the hadith. So you could do something like that and uh, listen to the lessons of uh, any sheikh that has a Bukhari or Muslim complete online and go along with the with the book and uh, and memorize and you can do that even in, in the, the, the time that you're memorizing the Mukhtasar or Riyadh Salihin or even you're memorizing Bulugh Muram because a lot of the hadith that we memorize in Bukhari, in the class in Bukhari, when I when I started memorizing Bulugh Muram, I was like, okay, khalas, man, we already memorized this hadith three times with the Sheikh. <laughs> you know, so it's like you just memorize it quickly, you know, because now you're even memorizing it without the ascent, without the Senate. So, but you want to have that practice of constantly, constantly trying to memorize the hadith with the Asani. And obviously, once you memorize, if you memorize Muslim or Bukhari, then you're going to go to the other book and you're going to try to get that because you've already memorized Lutlu and Marajan. So the thing is, is now that you're only, all you're doing is you're taking the same ahadith and you're just putting the asanid with them. 
So once you've already memorized Lu'lu wa Marajan, you already got the body of the majority of the hadiths that are in Bukhari and Muslim. You got the vast majority of them. All right, so now you got to keep in mind that Bukhari's got a lot of repetition. Muslim doesn't have a lot of repetition, but he does. All right, and then uh, now you're just going to go and you're going to memorize those same hadith that you memorized in Lu'lu wa Marajan, but with the Asanid now. With Bukhari now, when you go to Bukhari, what you're going to be focusing on, you're not going to focus on the hadiths that you already memorized. You want to focus on the, the hadith that are, you know, munfar, like, you know, uh, they're like in Bukhari and they're not in Muslim. And you want to get those hadiths out. And you want to memorize those. And then once you've done that, then the sky is the limit. Ugh, you know, so <laughs> you go, you know, spend your life just memorizing hadith, memorizing hadith, memorizing hadith. If you want to memorize the Muslim of Imam Ahmed, then go, you know, whatever you want to do after that, then, you know, because once you've gotten to that point of memorizing Bukhari and Muslim, just, just to sit down, you know this just by reading it. If you sat down and you read Bukhari and you read Muslim and you're very familiar with Bukhari and Muslim, you, you read Sunan Abi Dawood, you read Sunan al and you know the vast majority of the hadith. They're already in your head. You already know them. So the same thing if you've already memorized them. So once you've gotten to that point, once you memorize the Lu'lu wa Marajan, and you already got it. You know, it's there. The hadith are there. So, what, you know, you could, you could read any of the books of the Sunan or even out, outside of the Sunan, Al-Musannaf li Abdul Razak, Al-Musannaf li Ibn Abi Shayba, whatever, you know, you can read any of these books, uh, the Ma'ajim of uh, Al-Tabarani, and you'll know that, okay, this is in Bukhari, this is in Muslim, this is in Bukhari, this is in Muslim. You'll know these, you know the Ahadith, at least the Metin, but they might have a different Senate that's not in Bukhari and Muslim, but you know them. The same thing like right now, uh, what I'm reading is I'm reading Sunan Abi Dawood, just to read it. So the same thing, I can look at these chains of narrations as I'm, because and I can say, okay, yeah, this is this, this is a chain from Bukhari because obviously, uh, you know, uh, so Abu Dawood he had some of the same teachers as Bukhari had, and also Muslim. So because they're all from that same same little area. So if you go and you look at it, you know, you see like the same chains of narrations that you see. I mean, he's literally got a lot of the same teachers as Bukhari and Muslim. So it's. But mostly Bukhari, you see a lot of his teachers, you know, are in Bukhari and Muslim. It's, it's unbelievable. So it's easier to read. Once you know Bukhari and Muslim and then you sit down and you read Sunnah Nabi Dawood, you're like, okay, yeah, this hadith is sahih, this hadith is sahih. You know, how many times are you going to read Hadith and Al-Qutayb ibn Sa'id? How many times are you going to read Hadith and Musaddan? You know, so all these, the same scholars, you know, they took from the same teachers. And then, of course, the chain is going to remain almost pretty much the same. So... Uh, it gets easier once you have Bukhari and Muslim, and you're very familiar with Bukhari and Muslim. Then, alhamdulillah, you know everything else becomes a lot easier. It becomes a lot easier because once you're going through like something like Sunan Abi Dawood, you wouldn't have to memorize all of Sunan Abi Dawood. You just have to go through Sunan Abi Dawood and memorize the ahadith that are only in Sunan Abi Dawood that are not in Bukhari and Muslim. And then when you go to the next book, like Sunan Al Tirmidhi. You would only be focusing on the ahadith that are not in Bukhari, not in Muslim, not in Sunnah Nabi Dawood, that are only in Tirmidhi, Tirmidhi. And you keep doing that all the way down to Sunan Ibn Majid. And by the time you get to Sunan Ibn, Ibn Majid, like how many ahadith that are only in Sunan Nabi, Ibn Majid that are not in these five books of hadith? So very few, very, very few. So once you get to that point, the memorization that you have, to, the majority of the hadith that are in Sunan Ibn Majid that are only in Sunan Ibn Majid, the majority of them are da'if anyways. But you still have to memorize them. You have to be familiar with them because people will use them for their batal. So you need to understand those. You know, so, but the main thing is, start with Al-Arba'in is your starting point. Read the explanations, study the book to the best of your capabilities. After that, like I said, my advice is to not go to Umdat al -Hakam. I would, uh, you know, my advice is to go to the Mukhtasar of Riyadh Salihin, memorize that, and then after the Mukhtasar of Riyadh Salihin, to go to Balugh Maram and memorize that. And, uh, you know, and after the Balugh Maram, the person goes to Lu'lu wa Marajan. Some people might say, okay, well, why don't you go to Al Muntaqa? Uh, but again, you just, if you go to Al Muntaqa, you're only going to be staying in, in a hadith of Ahkam. Uh, but you want to get closer to the Qutb al -Sitta. This is the whole thing. Every single book that you memorize, it should be bringing you closer to getting to the Qutb al -Sitta. And the whole time that you're memorizing these books, like you, you're, all right, you, you've done a lot of buying. Now you go into the Mukhtasar Riyadh Salahin. Now the Mukhtasar Riyadh Salahin, again, this book, al is going to be here. It's, it's in here because al was taken out of Riyadh Salahin. So you're going to see the hadith in 
Arba'in, they're here. They're already here. But now you're going to get, you know, 700 and, 770 more hadiths. <laughs> you know, 770 extra, you know, other than the 40 plus hadiths that are in Arba'in. And then, but the whole time that you're memorizing this, you should have a book of hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, that you're reading over and over and over and over again, and you're getting familiar with the chains and narrations. I, my personal advice is to read Bukhari, read Muslim, see which one you like the most, and stick with that one book and just keep reading it over and over and over again. That's that's my advice. Uh, you know, maybe somebody else would give you different advice, but if you if you read Bukhari and your heart is attached to Bukhari, and you read Muslim, and even after you read Muslim, like your heart is just attached to Bukhari, then take Bukhari and read it every six months. When you finish it, start it again. You finish it, start it again. Six months, eight months, as you like. If you want to read it once a year, as you like. Because obviously with something like this, if you're, if you're a person living in the West, you're working, you're trying to take care of a family, and you're trying to memorize this, obviously it's not going to be done in three months, four months, six months. It's going to be over time. So you're talking about memorizing the Mukhtasar of Riyadh al-Salihin. You're talking about memorizing Bulugh al You're talking about years to get it down, to get it down where you could just like read the whole book from your memory, no mistakes. You know, any hadith that the person asks you about, you can just give them the hadith from this chapter, that chapter. Alhamdulillah. Then you go to Lu'lu wa Marajan, so and in this time you're reading Bukhari over and over and over and over again. You know, so like let's say like every five times or every let's say every three times you read Bukhari, read Muslim, or read Al Muwatta, or read Sunan Nabi Dawood, or read one of the other of the other book, the Kutub Sitta, whatever. But the Bukhari is your main book. You're gonna read that over and over and over again. But you take a break, read some other books. You know, read Dada Kutni, read what read whatever you want to read, but constantly the one that gets repeated the most is Bukhari. So you want to get very familiar with the chains and narrations of Bukhari. And that's good if you read like two or three times and then read like Sunan Abi Dawood. Because then you can notice, you notice the chains. You see the chains and narrations. And you know like when you read this person, like for example, you read Abdul Razak. You know that Ma'amar is coming after Abdul Razak. Now the problem is, is that when you're reading Bukhari, you're going to see like Ma'amar and Abdul Razak, Ma'amar Zuhri. But in other books, you might not see that same chain because it might like after Mount Martyr might be a different person. So, you know, and you get you get accustomed to that. And so you start to see that that change. So this is something that you really, you know, want to start doing. Just reading, 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 reading. And uh, if you can sit down with a with a, one of the ulama who's taught like Sahih Muslim, taught Bukhari, and you could do the same thing. Just memorize the hadith with the Sanid and read it before you take the class and then sit down and uh, listen to the class, and then, you know, the next day, same thing, and just memorize those smaller hadith with the chains of narrations, just so it gets stuck in your head, and it's very beneficial. And obviously, with the Bukhari, as you're reading Bukhari, you also have Fath al-Bari, which is just a, the most amazing book. I mean, subhanAllah, the, the tawfiq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave half of Ibn Hajr to write that book, subhanAllah, it's, that, that book, subhanAllah, if that's the only book that you had at the time in your library, uh, you that, that book is sufficient to keep you busy for for years and years to come. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's not even sufficient that you read Fath al-Bari once. I know brothers that have read it multiple times, three, four, five times. It's just one of those books that you, it's not sufficient to read it once. You you know, it's, if you're going to have any type of focus on Bukhari, you're going to be in Fath al-Bari for a long time. So that's another book that you really, really want to become familiar with. Because uh, just some of the hadith, like you're reading in the chain of narration, where you might, you know, uh, come to just where they just mentioned the name of a person. Abdullah. Well, Abdullah, man, you know, who is this Abdullah? So you got to go back to Fath al-Bari. Also for the explanation of the hadith, maybe you want to understand, uh, the because obviously a lot of the fiqh of Bukhari is in his chapter headings, the the abwab, the tabweeb. So he puts his fiqh, his opinion in the, in the, in the bab, in the name of the bab. So you want to go back and you want to read that. Uh, also, you know, Bukhari is famous for having, you know, the, the ta'liq, you know, the, the, that he, that he brings a hadith that he brings it without the chains of narrations, you know, and, uh, you want to go back to, uh, to, to Fath al-Bari and see, you know, see about that hadith and what's the chain of narration as the hadith sahih. So a lot of different things and there's so much going on in Bukhari. Uh, Fath al-Bari is going to be your companion for a, for a long time to come. So if you sat there for five years just reading Bukhari as you're memorizing the Mukhtasar Riyadh al-Salihin, 
memorizing Bulu Gumaram and you're getting started on Alu'lu wa Marajan and you're going through Bukhari for those five years, you're going to be in Fath al-Bari for those five years. Over and over, I don't care how many times you read Bukhari, you're going to be going back to Fath al-Bari. So that's, that's something you got to be ready for. And that's why Bukhari is better to have focus, to focus on Bukhari is be, because of Fath al-Bari. Uh, the, 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 the other, if you look at like Sahih Muslim, we have like the, the Sharh of uh, Imam uh, Nawawi, Rahimahullah, which is a good Sharh, but it's not Fath al-Bari. And the same thing with Sunan Abi Dawood and all the other books of Hadith. Now, of course, uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Adam, al Ethiopi, uh, he, he wrote his Sharh of uh, Sahih Muslim, which, but it's huge, it's huge. And I don't think not too many people can afford to buy that. So the only one that's probably available and cheap, you know, and accessible to the people is the one by Imam Nawawi. And it's, it's very concise. He didn't really go into a lot of detail with a lot of like what what half of the Bahajr did. So yeah, that that makes Bukhari like top of the list. Just you know, you got Bukhari and what he did as far as the science of hadith is amazing. But then on top of that you got Fat al Bari and what half of the Bahajr did with Fat al Bari is amazing. So it's just like, you know, double amazing. So that's something that you really want to spend a lot of your life doing. You know, because you you know, it's just memorization. It's memorization, memorization and reading and understanding and you know, to, to constantly just have your your eyes just focus on books of hadith, books of hadith. But don't neglect the Quran, ya yeah, Do not neglect the Quran. You get busy with the hadith, but do not neglect the Quran. You should have enough Quran that you read on a daily basis every single day for your life. And you should also be going back to the books of tafsir and constantly reading Tafsir al-Sa'di, Tafsir al-Kathir, Fatah al-Qadir al-Shakani, Zad al-Nasir al-Ibn al Jozi, reading Tafsir al-Tabari, Tafsir, you know, all of these Tafsir, Tafsir al-Kathir, Tafsir al-Tabari, Tafsir al-Qurtubi, you should be in the Tafsir all the time. You know, don't neglect the Quran, and don't neglect the Arabic language, and definitely don't neglect any science of the religion. So like, you know, you should not be spending so much time on the memorization of hadith that anything is neglected but because everything's basis is on quran and the sunnah these are the two things that you should spend the most time memorizing this is more important than memorizing these matun more important than memorizing anything else so if you had a choice between memorizing five or six abwab in, in, in riyadh al-salihin or memorizing al al thalatha i would tell you to memorize those five or six abwab in riyadh al-salihin so the speech of the Prophet and you have that in Rasul al Talatha. But this is just pure speech of the Prophet. This is Adilla. Every single thing that you memorize is Adilla. Whereas, like, you know, Rasul al Talatha is Adilla also with speech of the person who wrote the book. You got, like, you know, so it's more important that you place the most emphasis on memorizing Quran and memorizing a hadith. Even while you're memorizing Quran, you memorize a lot of Ba'ina no weird. You, me you can memorize from this. You don't have to put your focus like, I'm going to memorize all this in six months. No. Memorize a bab here, a bab there, and just keep memorizing and keep reading it as you're memorizing the Quran. So your focus is on memorizing the Quran, but you're memorizing this also on the side. You know? And then once you get done with the Quran, then you can put your whole focus on this if you haven't finished it at that time. and then Or if you have finished it by that time, then you can go on to Baluga Maram and, and better things, you know. Not better things, that everything's better, but, you know, bigger things. So, this is a, you know, alhamdulillah, I hope that this is a, you know, the program that's beneficial for the people. And I hope it's, uh, you know, at least easy to follow, inshallah. But, like I said, the main thing just to follow is Arba'ina Nawawiyah and go to the Mukhtasar Riyadh Salahin, whichever one. There's, there's different ones other than this one, by the way. So you can't find this one and you can find another one. Just try to make sure that the Mukhtasar Riyadh Salihin that you get is, you know, at least 600 to 800 hadiths, you know, because you don't want less than that. They had some that are like 300. Some people, they, they made Mukhtasars that are just the, the Muttafaqun Ali hadiths or the short ones. Uh, you don't want that. This, this is the one thing I like about this book is that he did not do that. He kept the long hadiths too. You know, so like you have like, the, for example, the, the hadith about the Ghulam. You know, the Rahib and the Sahir, you know, and that's a long hadith. It's like, uh, you know, basically like two pages long. He kept it in here. You know, the hadith is in there. The hadith about the, the, the Abras wa Akra wa La'ma is here. You know, the hadith of Jibril is here. So he kept, you know, even the longer hadiths are still here. So this is why I like about this. He didn't just bring the short ones. 
short hadith. Now, he brought some of the long hadith, not all of them. Like you know, the hadith of Ka'b ibn Malik is not in here. You know, it's like three pages long. He didn't put that in here. The hadith of the people in the, in the, in the cave, it's not here. But like I said, again, if this is a hadith that you want to memorize, write it in a notebook and memorize it. It's, it's, it's simple. You know, and then go on to Balogh Maram and, and follow the program as it is. Inshallah, that should be sufficient for you to become very, very knowledgeable of hadith, inshallah. Bithni Allah ta'ala. Wallahu muwafak. Wa ilahuna subhanakana muwabihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruku wa atubu ilaykum.